Hey what's up guys, it's Adrian from Zulu 8 and today I'm going to show you everything you need to know about Swine Dynamics in Cinema 4D. Cool, so spline dynamics. Um, I'm going to teach you how to create your splines, make them dynamic, how to rig them, and how to make them collide with different objects in your scenes. You can kind of just create um, more of a dynamic feel to all your, uh, your movement in your scene. It can create a bit of realism. So let's jump into it. I'll start off by creating the spline itself. So what I'll do is grab my pen tool go hit the middle mouse button, go into my top view, and then I can just draw a spline directly into the viewport. It's gonna keep it simple and um, it's very basic today, just to show you guys exactly how to do it properly and then you can um, adjust everything to your scene and, and position things how you guys want it. But for now, I'm just gonna create this spline. So once you've got that spline, what you wanna do is, at the moment, because there's two points between this spline, it's a very rigid spline, so there's no geometry or, or subdivs in between, sorry, so so this will just stay as a stiff rigid um, line. So what we want to do is grab these two splines by shift clicking, oh sorry, these two points by shift clicking them, and then what you can do is hit U and then I think it is S for subdivide, US, and then what that will do is actually put these subdivs in your spline. So I hit that twice and what that did is put a uh, subdiv in the middle and then I hit it again, so it's subdiv there and there. So then what we want to do, actually I'll go back and redo that. Yep, so get rid of those. Just to show you again, we want more subdivs this time. So you go US, 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 US. And you can just do it as many times as you want to, and this basically just gives you um, a higher res spline, um, higher subdiv spline. So then that way, when you, uh, put dynamics to this it will bend every little point and have all this geometry to be able to s slope down and give you a nice curve um, yeah and that also affects how high poly your geometry will be once you sweep that later so just for now I'll start off by creating that spline then you want to go back into your perspective view rotate around try and um, create a null so what we're going to do with these nulls is actually use these as your rig so I'll call this can, uh, spline constraint. If I can spell quickly. <laughs> yeah. uh, cool. So I've got one there. What I'll do is drag it to uh, one end of the spline and then duplicate that. Control C, Control V, and then pull that to the other end of the spline. So let's chuck it there. I believe that's the other end. Yeah. Cool. So once you've got that, let's um, yeah, that's fine. Let's turn the grid off just for now, so we can actually see what we're working with here. Cool, too easy. Um, all right, so we've got these two constraints, right? So then what we wanna do is give our spline dynamics. So if you go to your spline, let's just call this rope for, uh, just to keep it clean. Right click on that, go down to head tags. So what you wanna do is go into this tab, come right, right down to the bottom and select spline dynamics. So once this is on your uh, on your object you can hit play and obviously boom it's happening there's dynamics on it but the problem is there's no constraints on either end of this rope so it's just going to infinitely uh, fall down and that's not what we want so let's go back and um, I'm going to just jump back quickly and show you another step that I missed which is really useful inside your viewport to see these kind of objects obviously a null it's just a floating point within the space of your viewport and you can't actually see that unless you have it selected it has a little dot but I mean it's very hard to see so let's change that to something like a diamond and then that way what's going to happen in your um, attribute editor when you see that now, like you can actually see that inside your viewport and if you click off it, you'll always have this diamond shape there. So once we've got that, it can be anything you want, depending on what you're rigging or what you want. So then we can go back to the basics tab, turn this on, the use color on, and then you can give it any custom color you want. So I generally go for something that's not going to be a similar color in the viewport. So I'll change that to like a blue of some sort, something just, just different and out there so you can actually see that in your viewport. So now if we click off, you can really see how easy it is to find that uh, that null in your scene now. 
So obviously duplicate that again and drag that over. Sorry, I'm going a bit back and forth, but we've, we've done that part, so that's finished. All right, cool. So to parent these spline ends, what you want to do is find the point wherever you want this point to be stationary or rigid. It could be in the middle, could be anywhere you want, but really we just want two ends to, to be stationary, okay? So for now, I'll select this one, and then what you do is you go into your, you right click on your tag, go down to hair tags and click constraint. So that will put a little object on your uh, object there. And then what we need to do is drag the spline, oh, sorry, the null that we want to parent this point on our spline to. So go back to the constraint, drag this constraint, uh, this null into that object tab. So then that's not the only step you need to do. Then what we do is select that one point on the end of your spline, go into your tag, and then you hit set. And when you've got that, this little uh, checkbox uh, to draw it on, when that's checked on, it will actually show you where it's being constrained to. And bear in mind that if this null isn't directly on top, what it does is it just keeps that, con uh, that offset and that um, spline here acts Oh, that line on in your viewport acts as a rigid line. So if we hit play now, if all is well, it should drop down and be like a kind of uh, hanging rope. There we go. So it's working. So if you look at it now, yeah, we've got a nice subdiv spline. Looks like a nice smooth rope, and it's just dropping down, and it's constrained is working fine. And like I said, that offset is being uh, kept. And if you really were very picky about this you would want to put that directly on top so you have no offset but it really doesn't matter it just it just constrains that to a stationary object so now what we want to do is just repeat that step for the other side so i'm going to go ahead and do that for you guys um, if i can get over there all right cool so we select that point again go to a rope and I'll keep in mind this one spline you can add as many constraints as you want and and um, yeah, that's the beauty of Cinema 4D. So hair tags, constraint. It will create a new constraint. And what you can do is then drag this second object, which is closer to your other spline point. And then you have your point selected again. And then what you do is hit set. And we can turn this drawer on and off, depending on how many you've got in your scene. And if it's cleaner, just turn it off, whatever. It's up to you guys. All right, cool. So now, again, let's hit play on that. We should have a little rope. Cool. So, I mean, that's just the basics of the spline, but I'll go into now how to create geometry around this, and um, then I'll go into how to create collider tags for other objects in your scene so that this spline act and rope actually interacts with your scene properly. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's grab a uh, sweep. So this sweep, obviously you need your spline along there, but you also need your profile. So let's go for just a generic little rope kind of thing. Let's get that circle in there. So this will be controlling the radius of your rope, um, your diameter, sorry, of your rope, of what you want. So if we drag that right down, let's just have like a skinny kind of little rope effect there. Drag that in. I think you, you want to have your, let's just drag that in to see. Yeah, so that's the wrong, uh, wrong set up so what you want to do is switch these two and then you should have a rope in your scene too too easy yep so that's how you create your geometry around your spine and this will actually be fully customizable you can go in here and change everything and it will all, all stay um, non-destructive for you so you can keep updating it as much as you want and yeah it's still still very fast it, the dynamics work perfectly so let's go through I'll actually show you guys quickly, for argument's sake, just how to actually change these dynamic tabs. I'll quickly run through these. So in your in your tag, this is where you can set your initial state. So what that means is, say I didn't want the spline to be starting off straight and then bouncing down. What I would do is wait until it's bounced down and obviously let's give ourselves some more frames. Let's go crazy 800. Um, yeah, so once this stops bouncing, what you can do is just set the initial state. So if I wanted it to start there, this simulation to start there, just hit initial state. And then what you do, you go back to the beginning and obviously it's kept that initial state. It will still drop down 
but it's better than it dropping down from the top. So yeah, that's just how you set up those kind of things. Um, let's go into properties. This is where you're going to give all your dynamic properties to your spline. I mean, it's self-explanatory. Um, I'll go through these afterwards and show you just how you can customize a bit of this to get different looks and feels. Um, your gravity, this is an important one. I mean, it depends on like your physical scene and what you want to go for, but you can actually scale this up and down um, depending on your scene just to get some different feels. Like if you're in space, like the example I showed you at the start, you'd obviously have zero uh, gravity and it creates this kind of floating, billowing effect in your rope and it, it looks really good. So that's another thing you can do. The cache tab, so this is where like once you've set up all these dynamic uh, tabs like properties, forces, etc. Um, what you do is you can just calculate your cache so it speeds it up and it it's a very, um, it locks you in kind of. So once you calculate that it, it plays the one simulation all the time. So that just helps you get consistency when you're rendering. You might render 10 uh, frames and then your render stops at 5. You might have a problem where it doesn't line up with the same uh, simulation. So calculating your cache actually helps you get that one simulation at the, every time. So that's a bonus of that. These steps actually gives you more, I think it's like, think of it as like higher resolution for your monitor. It's similar to that. So these steps, the higher you go, the more calculations you're going to have in your simulation. And um, obviously if you go too high, you'll probably slow down your viewport a lot and it won't be optimized. So I generally don't mess with this too much unless I need to, but that's just there so you guys can see that. Um, yeah, so let me just show you, let's animate this. So I'll move this from, let's go to coordinates, uh, move the Y position of it. So keep it there, go ahead like probably 200 frames, whatever, and drag this down and then keyframe that again. So what that's going to do is actually show you how this spline can actually interact with every animation in your scene. So yeah, it's actually working. Let's drag that forward so it's just a bit more quicker and dynamic just to show you some stuff. Yeah, see how nice and dynamic that is and everything lines up as you play it. Let's go back to this tab. Um, sorry, your um, spline dynamics tab. Go to properties. Oh, fourth, sorry. So let's turn this down to like something. Let's try zero for now. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah, cool. So now you can get like these nice ripple effects. You can change other things. If we turn the the drag down to zero, you should get a nice billowing spline that kind of doesn't slow up too much. It continues through, and you get this nice zero gravity wavy effect as if you would be in space which is really cool um, that's kind of how I got that effect at the beginning that you saw those dynamic splines attached to that um, asteroid and what we can do is even turn the stiffness down to like say 15 or let's try 10 and um, you can see how like that becomes more and more uh, flowy I guess so if you go into here your um, Turn this to natural. What you can do is actually change this. Yeah, there we go. So th this is how you control the, the resolution of your spine. Um, so your circle, your radius will, um, obviously if you subdiv that, it will give it more of a circular curvy look. So if you go up, you can get to, an, to a point where it's not too high res, but you still keep that circle from a distance. And then with this, obviously you can go back to the start. Um, and change this to natural as well. If you up the subdivs here, we're actually putting more divisions into this spline. So now if we hit play, subdiv that more, it's not gonna actually affect it. So that's another point I needed to make is that you have to make sure you get all your subdivs into the original spline before going ahead and doing this. So if I wasn't happy with this now, like for instance, I don't like how rigid this is close up, right? So what I would have to do is go back, recreate the spline, and start over. So that's just another good point that I forgot to mention at the start. But I mean, for now, it's fine to show you guys how it works. So yeah, cool. Let's go back to none and just keep that how it was. All right, so I've got this spline animation. Say now I wanted it to interact with something in the scene. So if I had, for instance, bring in a circle, 
of the sub divs on that to like 60 or something. Just keep it standard, that's fine. Um, bring this down. Let's put a bit of animation on that quickly. Coordinates, animation in the Y, position Y, sorry. Drag that forward, um, bring this up, and then hit keyframe again. So now we've got this animation, it's moving. It's actually, we can see it's clipping through the spline. So what we want to do is get this um, circle so that it has properties to interact with the spline. So now, if you go into your tab, uh, on, on your sphere, sorry, go right click and go to hair tags and then what we do is put a hair collider on this and what that actually does is just gives it a property so that this um, geometry has a invisible barrier around it and that will actually interact with this spline so now if we hit play it should actually hit that spline and then bring it up and then it all interacts and then that's how you pretty much create these dynamics in your scene it's as simple as that and you can create whatever you guys want like for instance what I did was got a really nice rope texture um, changed it to gold uh, made like a kind of like a metal uh, metal rope effect and then yeah it turned out really cool so I mean you guys can the, yeah, the power of this is endless you can do whatever you want and make it look like anything so it's great get creative with it guys I hope this uh, quick tip tutorial has helped you and um, if you want to see more tutorials like this check us out on um, our website zillowait.com.au forward slash tutorials and our Instagram um, we update a lot of stuff every day so check us out hope you guys like the tutorial cheers and have a good one